Hi, it's time for a chime video. So what you're looking at is the clock cover to a Newtone model L56 Jefferson chime. Newtone has always made a lot of clock chimes and the Jefferson series, which started in the late 1940s, was made all the way through the sort of mid to late 1970s. And although they still made covers similar to this, for some reason they stopped calling them Jeffersons. I don't know why that is. It was always a very popular chime. The ones that they made in the early and mid 1960s, instead of being sort of a reddish mahogany finish, this is what they call in the catalog as being distressed oak. And I'm not sure exactly how it's distressed oak. It looks more like possibly distressed maple to me, but what do I know? And in the 60s, the dial face for the clocks is somewhat different than on earlier models and also on later models. I suppose it was the style of the day. You have this sort of light ivory color with these little scrolly filigree sort of things all over it. So when people want to get their L model or K model chimes serviced and they'd like to get the clock mechanism in the cover serviced also, that's something that we can do. However, we absolutely do not want people to send us all of this. It's far too big. It's far too likely to be damaged. Even though in this example, the finials have been removed. They're stored away right now so they don't get broken off. If you ship it with the finials in place, odds are at least one of them is gonna get broken. So not a good idea to send the whole thing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove the clock assembly from the cover so you can send it with your door chime base and get it all serviced. The idea for this video came out of a conversation I had with Tiffany. Tiffany lives in Indiana. She recently inherited her, her great grandfather's L56 door chime. It hasn't worked in more than 20 years and she'd like to get the chime base and the clock serviced so it works again and I think she's gonna put it up in her house. So this video is for Tiffany. To start off with, what you need is, you need a cloth or something to put down on your work surface because we're going to turn the clock face down so we can get to the back of it. Looking down at the back of the clock assembly, you can see the clock plate is this great metal square and it's screwed to the inside of the wooden cover. So what we need to do is we need to remove this from the wooden cover. It is held to the wood with eight little screws. There's four on each side and pretty basically all you need is a regular small size screwdriver and you simply unscrew the screws. These are slotted screws, not Phillips, and they are very, very short. Hard to even show. They're very small. They have to be very short because if they were longer when you screwed them in, they would poke through the front of the cover and ruin it. Once you take them out, of course, where are we gonna put them? We're gonna put them in our little metal cup to start with because you don't want to lose them. If you lose them, then you've got to go to the hardware store and try to find screws that are the same. And of course, you'll find a lot of screws that are similar, but none that are exactly the same. So it's best just not to lose them in the first place. So we'll take them out. It only takes a minute to do that. There's five and six and seven and eight. Now you think we'd be done, but we're not because there's also this bracket right here. So this is the rod that you pull down and turn to set the time. And on L model chimes, not on K model chimes, which are earlier, and not on LA and later chimes, which are later, they don't have this little bracket, but L model chimes do. And it's to give the rod some support so it doesn't get bent from side to side. The difficult thing here is that the way this is assembled, this part of the rod right here comes out of the clockwork mechanism up there. And then this larger diameter piece right here is threaded onto it and it goes through the slot in the bracket. This almost never wants to come apart here anymore. They're usually frozen. It's a machine thread and it's really hard to get it apart and you don't want to break it and it's all just a giant pain in the neck. Sometimes you can get the little knurled knob off, but that's not always easy to do either. You have to remember this, like this cover is from around like 1965, 1966. You know, it's almost 60 years old and sometimes when you start forcing things, you can have a problem. So the way I do this is if you just lift up the metal rod 
a little bit and you have a reasonably small diameter screwdriver, you can get it onto the head of the screw well enough. They're not giant screws, they're small and they don't, they're not very long. And even at somewhat of an angle, if you press down and rotate the screw, you can get one out and then the other one. Of course, as you loosen them, the bracket tends to flop around more so it gives you more room to work on. So once you've taken that out, now this is not a problem anymore. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the clock mechanism out of the case. And for the moment, we're gonna put it aside. When you do this, the cup, the glass is now loose. There's the piece of curved glass. And when you send your clock in for repair, I don't need the glass. The glass stays at your house. You put all of this somewhere super safe. Not where the grandkids are gonna knock it off the table and break it. Not where the cat's gonna push it on the floor because he's mad about the kind of cat food you got for him that time he went to the grocery store or any of those sort of things. Someplace nice and safe. When you get all of this back and you have to reassemble this, put this back in the cover, it's a good time to clean the inside of the glass because although you wouldn't think so, they do get dirty and grimy on the inside and all that kind of stuff. So right now I'm gonna put this aside and we'll talk about the clock itself. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our clock assembly. So you'll notice at this point, the dial face is loose because it's not held into the frame anymore or the glass. And actually when this gets reassembled, there's pieces of tape that go across the corners. You can actually see right here, this little triangle area where there's residue from the tape. You don't see it when you put it together, but it holds the dial face straight. So when you put it back in, it's not crooked, to hence it being straight. You have the hands here and on the back side. You have the motor, the clockwork mechanism, the adjusting rod, and the wires that plug into the chime base for power. One of the things you have to be really, really careful of, and it's not uncommon at all, and Tiffany's great-grandfather's chime is like this. This is the coil of the motor, and these are the two connection points for the wires. This is a paper-wrapped electromagnetic coil, and these points where the wires are soldered on, underneath the paper are these long, thin, curvy metal straps that then are connected to the wires inside the coil. The paper in the coil cover, because it's 60 or so or more years old, sometimes we're working on chimes that are from the late 1940s. So those are really old. Uh, the paper deteriorates, becomes brittle and hard, and when you pull if, if the wires get tugged on you're taking the cover off or whatever it is that you're doing the paper will, will tear and the connection strips underneath the paper will become loose and they'll be flopping around and that's all a problem we can repair all of that but it's always better if we don't have to so what you need to do is you need to do something with the wires so that they're out of the way when you wrap this up to ship it and the best thing to do is just very carefully sort of coil them up like this to keep them out of the way. You could put a little twist tie on it or something like that if that helps hold it together and that would be great. On these models that have the long adjusting rod, don't try to take this off. Don't try to do anything. If you bend it or break it, then it's a real problem and we don't want you to do that. Once you've done all of that, you need to prepare this for shipping. And one of the considerations when you prepare this to ship it is, of course, you don't want the dial face to get scratched up or scuffed, and you don't want the hands to get bent because if the hands get bent, it's really, really hard to straighten them out again. So the way I recommend doing this and the way we do this when we send these back to people is I have these cardboard squares and you'll notice there's a slot cut out of it. And these cardboard squ squares just happen to be exactly the same size as the dial face like this. And what you do is you take the first one and you slide it over the dial face underneath the hour hand like this. And then you take the second one and you slide it underneath the minute hand like that. And then, not surprisingly, you take the third one and you slide it underneath the second hand like that. This gives support 
to all of the hands so when you wrap it up, they don't get bent. Now, of course, at the end, you take a solid one with no slot and you put it over the front of the second hand like that. If you need to put a little tape across the cardboard around the edge and on the back side to hold these on when you wrap it up, that's fine. Once you've done this, it's very, very well protected. And then you can wrap it up in some bubble wrap and, and whatever to make sure that it makes the journey safely. Lastly, the very last thing you need to consider is you go all the way back to the beginning of this video. What did I say to do with the screws? I said to put them in a little metal cup. We use lots of little metal cups around here. It's a good thing for holding screws and stuff, but you don't want to leave them in this forever because while you're waiting for all this to come back, because odds are the cat's going to knock it off the table. It's going to fall into the orange shag carpeting and then they're going to get vacuumed up and then you're going to be sad. So what do you do with the screws? Well, you do what we do around here. We have little plastic bags. We buy little plastic bags all the time. You may not have ones just like this, but I bet you have some Ziploc sandwich bags in your kitchen. So what you do is you get a Ziploc sandwich bag or something else like that, and you take the screws and you put it in the plastic bag and then you close it up. The odds of this getting lost now are very low because you're not gonna throw this away because you've got screws in a plastic bag. And if you see it lying around on a table or something, you're not gonna think, oh, I should throw that away. It's like, oh wait, that's important. Those are the screws for the clock. They're in a plastic bag. We should keep those. The other thing that you can do, and what we do here, like when Tiffany sends hers in, if it had screws, which it won't, is we write on the bag what it's for. I could write on the bag. I put Tiffany L56 screws. Now I know that they're screws because I can see them in the bag, but you get the idea. If you put them in a plastic bag and you write something on the bag, odds are you're never going to lose these. You're always going to know where they are. And of course you put them in a safe place and the safest place to put them would be with the clock cover and the glass that you put somewhere really safe, like in your best guest bedroom closet where you never go. And it's got all the wrapping paper for Christmas presents. So that's how you take the clock assembly out of a new tone clock chime cover. And this doesn't apply only to K56s or L56s or LB56s or whichever Jefferson chime you might happen to have. It covers all Newtone clocks that are assembled in this manner. And the majority of them are. Some of them have round metal plates instead of squares and they'll have four screws. Some of them only have three. I guess they were saving on screws in those days, but they're all fundamentally the same. And this is fundamentally how you remove it and fundamentally how you prepare it for shipment and definitely how you fundamentally don't lose the screws. So I hope you find this interesting and helpful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell. And when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we make a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.